We've been drinking water. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> One time I had a bobby pin that was like opened up like this and I kept going like this. And it flew out of my head. And I turned immediately and saw I hit a guy in the head like I saw him literally go like this. <laughs> my name is Monica. I'm Nelly. And this, this is, is Subscriber oh, Scary Stories. Stories. Number 28. Eight. February 23rd. <laughs> What? Can what you guess what our subject is, even though I told you? What's our subject? You don't remember? No. I told you three seconds ago. Possessions? No. Assault? No. Brujeria. <gasps> Brujeria. Our favorite subject ever. Do y'all ever have those teachers who would lick the fuck Ew. out of the fingers and they'd leave a fucking fingerprint on the pages? I had a teacher who grabbed me by the arm really aggressively. Who? She did? Yes, because I was in the wrong area. <laughs> she was like, you're not supposed to be here. I forgot how to start these because I've had too much water. So this first story is from Bella. Hi, Bella. Oh my God, Bella, where have you been? Where have you been, loca? Hi, Monica. I'm a big fan of your channel. And you and Lupita and Mateo always crack me up. Where's Nelly? Where the f*** am I? My name is Bella. This story is about my mom. When my mom was younger, she had really bad eczema. And it was so bad to the point. Stop <laughs> laughing. Stop laughing. No, I started thinking about that vine of that little kid that was like, you got eggs. I got what? The eczema. <laughs> and it was so bad to the point it was really painful and it was all over her arms. My tia and tío took her to their rancho in Mexico to try and find help. When they were out at the stores, the lady stopped my tía and mother. She was talking about how beautiful my mom was and noticed her arm. She said she wanted to help, but it would cost something so valuable and take a lot for the lady to do it. My tía agreed and they went back to the rancho together. The lady explained to my tías and tíos what she had to do. My tía didn't say too much, but it did involve brujería. A week later passed since the lady had came and my mom's arm was healed. They wanted to say thank you in person to the lady when they couldn't find her or contact her. They had went asking around the stores they had found her in the first place. A lady had told them that the police found her dead in a big tree and the big branches had went through her. My tia and tios think this is what she meant, that it would cost a lot for the lady to heal my mother. Thank you for listening to my mom's story. She was like, oh, I'll heal you if you do something for me. Literally murder me. I think she said, I'll heal you, but it's gonna cost a lot. You know, it reminds me of this story someone told me that somebody had some brujeria done on them and they went to a curandera and the curandera cured them, but they ended up getting really, really sick, like almost died. Scary, huh? Oh my God, wait, this is like off topic. Well, it's like a lady that does tarot readings and she was on a podcast. I don't know if I sent it to you, but she was talking about how she was giving a reading to this one girl that was super young, like my age, I think. Our age? Um, she was super young, right? So basically, when she was reading her card, she was like, you're gonna die super young. The guy that you're with, he's gonna put you into problems and he's you're gonna die because of him. And the girl no le hizo caso para nada, but she would keep coming back to that lady. And that lady had told her like, this man is crazy. He's gonna put you in problems. Like you're literally gonna die because of him. Leave him, leave him. And then she ended up telling her the next session that, oh, you're so right. He's so crazy, like this and that. He's threatened to kill me already. Like I'm even doing this secretly with you. Like if he knew I was here, he would literally kill me. She was like, okay, well, I'm not gonna do your readings anymore because then you're gonna get me killed. But I told you to leave him and all this stuff. And then next thing you know, her son was watching the news and she tells her that the same girl that she was giving readings to died because her boyfriend killed her. Did that have anything to do with what we just read? Topic, okay, I'm we sorry. listen to tarot reading, sister. Let's not say what you mean. I've never said that in my life. <laughs> Ew. I know, I look ugly. No! Wait, we look so cute. I'm a little bit cross-eyed. I'm not gonna lie. You know what? What if we're Two. both cross-eyed and we're just... <laughs> <laughs> and we look normal because our eyes are... <laughs> it's okay, there's nothing wrong with being cross-eyed. Okay, this one is called My Childhood Was Erased. Mine was two, I don't remember shit. Me either. <laughs> I can't really remember my childhood like my sibling can. I don't recall much, just small snippets, small flashbacks that it, I only seem to get when I'm sleepy. According to my parents and my siblings... <laughs> According to my parents and my siblings, I was one of those kids who talked with walls. But it wasn't really... <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. According to my parents and my siblings, I was one of those kids. <laughs> Take a 
breathe this thing of something sad. Goober. <laughs> That's where my head went to. And According to my parents and my siblings, I was one of those kids who talks with walls, but it wasn't really scary until we moved into a house when I was around five or six-ish. My family has many brujas in our heritage and we are well aware of them. My mother believes that there was a bruja who would turn into an owl and would constantly follow my older sister when she was a newborn. But once we moved into that house, the owl disappeared and they began hearing footsteps on the roof. It wasn't until my family began seeing me talking to windows that they called a priest. My family says there would be a time when I myself would disappear out of nowhere. They also say I would spend hours staring into the walls of the house. According to my mother, I began knocking on closed closets and she would hear responses. My sister also said that there was a time that I knocked on the door of our closet and a loud bang was heard from the inside of the closet where there was nobody. No, my hair was in the way. Did you hear that crack? Yes, I did. That's why. I'm scared now with the curtain closed. And you know what they say, when you drink alcohol, you're more vulnerable to you. Just shut up! What's wrong with you? <laughs> Due to my mother being deported, we had to leave the house and go to Mexico, where I met my grandma, who was blind. This is important. I remember that my grandma did an egg cleanse on me because she claimed something or someone was attached to me. And it was a very dark entity. So dark, she could see it, but not me. Once we arrived back to America, we moved into a trailer home. By this time, I had no recollection of my childhood, but I was constantly seeing shadows around me, always there in the corner of my eyes. My grandfather, who had no idea of the cleanse my great-grandmother had done, said that whatever I had done had made it worse. At the time, I didn't understand because, well, I had no recollection of my childhood. When I was finally 12, my grandfather asked for me to allow him to do an egg cleanse on me and my my mother said yes. After the egg cleanse, he tried to break the egg, but it would not crack no matter how hard he tried. Ew. He then whispered a prayer to the egg and squeezed the egg into a cup and had millions of little bubbles floating in it. I believe that was because of how much he tried to break the egg. He then grabbed my hand and placed it in the cup and the bubbles legit surrounded my hand immediately. It was the craziest thing I had ever seen. My grandpa told me that my hand was holding death's hand and that's why every once in a while I see the dead. He then confessed to me that when we lived in our old house my mother asked him to help me to stop seeing, hearing, and talking with the dead so he closed my third eye and that's why I had a different handprint from everybody in the family. I had never noticed before but he was right. My hands were different. He said that maybe when he closed it someone else was trying to open it to use my body to possess me but they didn't succeed but since it was slightly open I could see the dead he said that the only downfall to him closing my third eye was that I would never truly recover my childhood memories I'm still very confused about it but I truly believe I can see the dead at times there was this one instant when I was walking to the restroom at night and there was a window with the curtains aside and I got the sudden urge to look outside when I did I saw my dog he was staring right back at me I wasn't immediately scared it wasn't until I felt fear to turn back around I felt like my dog wasn't staring at me but at someone behind me. Ew. When I finally got the courage to look behind me, I did a quick turn around and saw no one was behind me. And when I looked back at the window, my dog was nowhere to be found. I have no idea what was scarier, the fact that I wasn't sure it was my dog or that I could physically feel someone behind me. I have so many stories that I would love to tell you, like how one time I was sitting in silence in my sister's apartment and I kept hearing the name Ivan in my head. And when I asked my sister, she said that an old man named Ivan had killed himself in the apartment. She didn't believe me and neither did my brother-in-law. They asked if I knew the last name and I said I didn't know but I could figure it out. So I sat in the dark for hours and all I could remember was closing my eyes and seeing a man sitting on the top shelf of the closet. When I looked at the top shelf of the closet, I saw the letter Q engraved in the wood. His name was Ivan Quincy. Oh my god. My sister moved out so quick. Again, I really love your videos. I hope one day I can meet you and tell you all about the experiences I have had over the years. Hope this makes its way to you. Thank Aww, you. Thank you. Thank you, Liliana. That's scary, and I actually forgot what happened. Hold on. That's scary. Do you think grandma did something to her? They they did the egg cleanse, and then whatever was kind of worse. Oh, the and egg cleanse the part egg. was crazy. And your video that went viral on TikTok. Or put that. Oh, my God. I forgot about that when I gentrified egg cleanses. Oh, my God. <laughs> when you break the egg and you see pointy images in the shape of needles or nails, this means that there are people who have cast black magic spells on you, meaning they do not want you to succeed. And my egg cleanse audio went viral and it was just a bunch of white people and a lot of them were just cracking eggs too they weren't even rubbing it all over themselves or doing or praying or doing anything they were just cracking eggs and they were like, <sighs> and reading it good times good times guys don't have a libra sister if your mom's pregnant she's gonna have a libra uh, make her scared so she has the baby early guys look what i got at the amazon return store for one dollar 
<laughs> All right, this one is called Family Ghost Stories. Hey, Monica, my name is China. I love your videos and I like to binge watch your scary storytelling, so I decided to send you two of mine. I hope you like them. When I was younger, around the age of six, my older sister had a guy friend named Edward. <laughs> I guess. When I was younger, around the age of six, my older sister had a guy friend named Edward. And usually, he'd come over to our house to spend time with the family. There were some times where we'd sit at the dining table or the living room and tell scary stories. But this one particular night, it was just me, my oldest sister, Edward, my mom, and our dog, Lucy. Edward was telling us about how his dad would always talk about a witch that lived in his pueblo and how his neighbors would say that she was a shapeshifter. Then he continued to tell us that his uncle and father would like to test their luck and would stay out later than usual to see if they'd see the witch. His dad and uncle would sit on the porch drinking a few beers and and smoke cigarettes. His dad wasn't much of a drinker, so it would make sense for him to not be wasted, but his uncle, on the other hand, would get drunk when it came to drinking. So when they were sitting on the porch chilling and having a conversation, they suddenly started hearing the clicking of a horse's hoofs, and his father stood up immediately while his uncle started laughing and pulled out a handgun. Terrified, his father told him to put it down, in which his uncle was drunk and didn't have much control of the gun. His dad kept repeating to put the gun down, but then stopped speaking as the horse was getting closer and closer, and that eventually was seen right across the street. His uncle then got up in fear and sobered up and aimed at the horse, then started shooting. His father and uncle ran over to it, only to find the body of a lady, the witch. When they saw it wasn't the horse they thought was shot, they both ran inside and decided to never speak of it again. Then a few years after, his uncle passed away due to suicide, in which he shot himself with the same gun that was used to kill the witch. His father moved into the States shortly after Edward was born. His dad would say that he'd hear the laughter from an old lady, then hooves walking up and down the driveway till eventually it stopped. When Edward finished telling us this story, the light flickered a little bit and Lucy, my dog, got up terrified and started growling. And my mom told us to start praying in which the dog calmed down and laid back down as if nothing happened. I don't know how people like go through these experiences and then they just move on from it like regular life. I don't know what I would do if I actually physically saw something. I'll hear some things, but I, I never see anything. Ugh, stop. I don't want I feel like you're attracting when you're like, oh, I haven't seen that yet. It's like, bitch, let me show you that. No, and I won't. I feel like my heart would fall out of my butt. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know how my mom goes on. Like, she's sleeping like so comfy right now, like snoring like, the only thing is she Your can't sleep in the dark. So bummy now. My duckies. I got a mute. Let me know if you want to add some more scary stories for a video. This is the second one. The same email. There you see. I had an uncle that had recently passed away due to COVID. He was such a great person and since my dad wasn't around much, he had taken his place and raised my siblings and I as his own and helped my mom around the house as it was hard for her since she was going through a divorce with four kids. My whole family was having a birthday party for my little cousin Lupe. She was turning three and since that side of the family lived in Alabama and we live in Georgia, we, we had taken the trip to celebrate with the whole family. The house was overall a big ass house with a lot of space and a huge backyard where my cousins and I would play in all the time. I really felt awful in the house because of how much stuff would go on like I would remember the house having stairs that would lead to two rooms but when I grew older and I mentioned it to my tia she said the house never had an upstairs but back to what my tia experienced in the house it was just a normal family visit with everyone having fun and partying and soon the party had ended and everyone went inside to get ready for bed have coffee and talk for a little bit as always everyone eventually went to bed but since the house is so crowded my tia slept in the living room on the couch which she had no problem with the next morning my uncle seemed to be the first one up but when everyone else was awake he asked the kids, including me, if, if we were up late the night before, in which everyone responded saying no, and that they were asleep. His face went blank, and he asked for everyone to gather around his living room, then proceeded to tell us that he kept hearing someone running around the house, and that he thought it was a child because it sounded like one. Then the thing had suddenly stopped right where he was, and just stared at him, then ran off. He said he couldn't see what it was, due to it being dark, but when he had turned the lights on, nobody was there. But before he turned the lights off, the Bible that sat on the coffee table opened, looked like someone was flipping through the pages, well, the Bible eventually closed. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? 
He said he couldn't see what it was due to it being dark, but when he had turned the lights on, nobody was there, so before he turned the lights off, the Bible that sat on the coffee table opened. It looked like someone was flipping through the pages. Well, the Bible eventually closed, and he stood there in complete shock as he just witnessed it right in front of him. He then proceeded to say that he stayed up all night praying with the light on, terrified to see what would happen if he turned the light back off. My dear that owned the house started blessing the house daily and putting up crosses around the house, but then moved out, and now when the house is mentioned, she walks away from everyone and locks herself in her room not wanting to hear about it as it had terrified everyone but mainly made her angry thoughts and opinions that's an opinion about that i honestly forgot oh, i forgot yeah. the whole story thank you china for your stories you take watch out a lot then you would be good and you would be able to eat duckies again i want this one <laughs> <laughs> Wow, so it was like a, a generational curse. Because his uncle killed a horse, bah, 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 it went to the son, Edward. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is so scary. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I wonder if our family's cursed. <gasps> like, yeah. the leals. Because yeah. some like crazy shit is always happening. Man, we can't even talk about it, but it's crazy, guys. Let me know how to cure it, please. If you know, you know. Hello? Why are you just staring at me? Oh, I like just I started thinking about something. <laughs> what the? Like, I just, I this scared. is so scared. Wow. I was fucking looking at you. I'm sorry. You scaring me. No, I was Our thinking about friends. how some girl, you know how Aphrodite, she would curse people who were more beautiful than her, even though nobody's more beautiful than her. Some girl posted this. I didn't say this, but that for her to curse like customers that were rude she would be like oh my god you're so pretty prettier than aphrodite like so that aphrodite could curse them what yeah don't do that guys but then someone in the comments said what did aphrodite curse you too for thinking that Ooh. oh my god that's crazy that's crazy i never really think about that that people do brujeria but with like greek gods and stuff mm -hmm. let me know if y'all got experiences with the greek gods down below this one is called My Scary Story About Brujeria. We love to hear this on your channel, smiley face. Okay. My dad was born in Mexico, and when he was around 10 years old, my grandpa would stay some nights at the farm while him, his siblings, and my grandma stayed at the house in the small town they were from. One night, my dad had to take dinner to my grandpa on his horse. The trip to the farm is about 20 minutes. That night, he says he was about 10 minutes in, and in the trail, he ran into a man walking six big dogs and wearing a huge sombrero. My dad says he said buenas noches, and the man didn't say anything, and that the dogs didn't budge, didn't react, that here the horses were there either. <laughs> oh my fucking gosh. What the fuck? My dad didn't mind it much until two miles down, he ran into the exact same man, same dog, same fit and all. My dad says he's got scared and started running the horse until he got to my grandpa and told him what he had seen and my grandpa said, Oh, esos no más son almas perdidas, mijo. And my dad just stayed the night there. Uh, this is shit I don't like. But why the six dogs? Number two, this also takes place in Mexico. My dad had an uncle that was married and they lived in a small house by a tall tree. The uncle one day was coming home kind of late at night and caught an owl. He caught it so he can tie it up on the table so he can prank his wife in the morning when she woke up. When they woke up the next day, he asked her if she didn't get spooked by the animal he had caught. And she said that there was no animal tied up anywhere when she woke. All within a week, that uncle got really sick and he passed away. They say he had caught a witch because there was an owl that would hang in the tree by their house until he passed. In the rancho, where we're from in Mexico, we don't have a word for S-walkers. We, we just call them brujas. Anyway, me, Stephanie, and Emily love your videos. Oh my god, you. you guys had three sisters. So cute. That's also, leave owls alone. Not all of them are witches. Comment for ne Megan, like for Nikki. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I remember... I have this memory as well, like a long time ago, maybe like 10 years ago. I remember my neighbor was freaking out because she saw what looked like a lady on a, on a broom. Oh, I remember that. You remember that. that? I do remember that. Flying like through the mountain, yeah. like through the hills. How do you remember that? I don't know, but I remember that. How old was I? Six or something? Why do I remember that so hard? I kind of want to ride a broom. I think it'd be scary. Yeah. <laughs> Fake ass laugh. Don't put that part where you say, I kind of want to ride a broom. Don't put that part in. Why? I'm going to poop it. <laughs> An actual broom like an escoba. A Swiffer sweeper. Anyway, happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. What you mean? Honestly, that's it in my point of view. At this point of view. At this point of view. Yeah, that's why I don't mess with brujeria. It's too scary for me. 
Should I put a love spell on somebody? No. Because whenever they start loving you, you stop loving them. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Yeah. We need a thumbnail. Before we check on my mom to see if she's okay. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's so fake. That's not how you get scared. <laughs> like that. That's how I get scared. What's your hair about? I don't know what that is. You keep saying that. Thank you guys for watching. Bye. Alrighty, bye. Bye. Wait, cute picture. I just heard your smile. It's like. <laughs> <laughs>